What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today we did see a large sell off across the indices and we are still in a bear market and we are still in a downtrend. First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. Yes, I am sick. And yes, I hope my voice can last through this episode. So today in SPY, we were down just over 2% and we're coming back down to this support level right around 380. And we do have gaps to fill to the upside and the downside. So to the downside, we have that gap at 379. And then we have support at 370 and the gap fill at 369. To the upside, we have that resistance at 389. And above that, we have the gap fill at 401. So keep in mind, this is a bear market and a downtrend. And it's a downtrend until it's not. So you should always expect bears to show up at resistance. And as you can tell, SPY did hit two critical resistance levels right around that 389 resistance and our negatively sloping 20 simple moving average which is right around 391. So bears are going to take that short trade every single time because the risk and reward in that setup is just too damn good to ignore. So if you're a bull, you should be getting a lot more risk off as you come into resistance and possibly even consider shorting the market at resistance. Remember, you're going to have the easiest time trading in the direction of the trend and we are still in a very strong downtrend. The next thing to pay attention to is that the price action is getting that pullback from resistance and anytime we're getting the pullback, we want to see if we're going to get a higher low and then price action taking out the previous high to tell us that the downtrend is ending. And this is the only time I would be getting bullish. Until we see this exact price action scenario, you need to remain bearish because you are still in a downtrend. So what is more than likely going to happen as long as we're in the downtrend is we are going to continue to form these lower highs before the next lower low. And while we are in the downtrend, we still do have a valid price target down here at SPY 350. Now you cannot assume that we have to go straight down there. There is still the possibility we have more upside to resistance and possibly even fill the gap. And then we could still roll over at a higher resistance level and still get the next leg lower. So you need to watch these critical levels. And if you are a bull, you need to set your risk at 380 because below 380, we're going all the way back down to 370 and possibly even lower. So the bears still have full control and we will see the bears still in full control until SPY can start closing back over the 20 simple moving average and then back over the 50 EMA. So right now, the most critical resistances on SPY are at 391 and 402, which is that 50 EMA, which is also our resistance trend line. So remember, the closer price action gets to this picture of the bear, the more likely you are going to run into strong resistance and see price action moving lower. If at any point we start breaking back down below 370, remember that you're at increased risk of that next leg lower and capitulation. So even though I do have the next price target at 350, you do need to be aware that there is no guarantee we cannot go lower than that. So while that is a valid price target, we could still go lower than that if this bear market does go from bad to worse. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were down just over 3% today and we did slice right back down through that support at 287 after a very clear rejection from the resistance trend line and we did not fully close the gap above at 299. So you could see the triple Qs were a lot closer to the big bad bear and the price action is showing you exactly why that bear is sitting there with the clear rejection from that resistance zone right around 296 to 297. So from here, you can see that we still have the valid bear trend with all the moving averages still stacked to the bear direction and the next gap close to the downside is right around 277. Below the gap close at 277, you have the previous low at 269. And below 269, we're making that next leg lower with the price target down there at 258. So you only have two critical support levels left for the bulls at 277 to 275 and then that previous low right around 269 to 271. Below that you're looking for fresh 52 week lows and that next leg lower at 258 and possibly even lower than that. The next bullish breakout will be the close above about 294 to 295 and then getting back over the 50 EMA which is right around 303. So remember the bulls have to prove everything because the bears have the advantage of the trend. So if you're waiting to get bullish you need to see price action going to a higher low breaking out and making another higher high on the daily chart, which will be the retest of that previous high right around 315. So let price action do all of the talking and right now price action is clearly telling us that we're getting rejected from resistance and we're printing a very bearish candle, but you cannot completely rule out the possibility that this pullback could be a higher low. So you still will want to watch those critical support levels below. In the Dow Jones, we were down 1.6% with a clear rejection from the negatively sloping 20 simple moving average at 316 without fully closing the gap above at 323. So the bears are still in full control in all of the indices and we still have bear trends across the board with bearish price action getting rejected from resistance. So the next valid downside price targets in the Dow Jones will be the gap close at 307 
And then the gap closed down here right around 299. And if we break below 297, you're looking for that next leg lower that could bring us all the way down to 276. Even though that seems like a lot lower, the Dow Jones is actually not down as much as the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. So it could have a lot more downside left in the tank. Now, on the contrary to the downside, if we see price action getting back over 311 and closing above the 20 simple moving average at 316, you're looking for that next bullish breakout on a breakout above the gap close at 323. And then we should retest the previous high right around 333. Bears will be waiting at every single resistance level while they have the advantage of the strong downtrend. So as a bull, you have a lot of proving to do in the price action before the downtrend is over with. On the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we were down 1.88% and we did close that weekly gap and we did test resistance at the 20 simple moving average. And lo and behold, we see a very clear rejection from resistance and we still have the bear trend in the downtrend. The next valid price target to the downside is right around 170, which will close the gap. And below 170, you're looking for a retest of the low right around 164. And below 164, the next leg lower price target is down there at 156. So you see this very clear pattern developing in the indices, getting rejected from resistance and potentially getting ready to form that next leg lower. So while this is more than likely going to be the scenario, as long as we're in a bear market, you cannot completely rule out the bull scenario if the price action does bounce from higher lows and then break out to a higher high. So it's going to be very important to know both of these scenarios and then follow price action accordingly because if you just blindly expect the market to break down to new lows and you're ignoring price action bouncing off higher lows and breaking out to higher highs then you will miss the next bull market rally even though i do not believe we have to get one there is always the possibility that every time we put in a bottom that could be the bottom before the next bull market rally so just have an open mind and follow price action accordingly. The next bullish breakout in IWM will be back over 175, getting over the 20 simple moving average at 177 and fully closing the gap above at 184. And that will be the bullish breakout above that resistance. On the RK ETF, we were down nearly 6% today, clearly getting rejected from the 50 EMA as resistance and coming back down to the 20 simple moving average as support right around 42. So downside support will be down here at 42 and these previous lows right around 39 to 36.5. And below 36, you're looking for that next leg lower at 33.7. The bullish breakout will be two consecutive closes back over 47 and then back over 52. So the bulls have a lot of work to do to get back over resistance in this ETF. On the VIX, we were up 5.16% as the VIX spikes back above 28. And as you can clearly see, the VIX is still in consolidation, forming higher lows and lower highs. So we are about to see in the VIX the next direction the market wants to take because we're either going to see the VIX spiking back above 30 for a volatile leg lower, or the VIX crushing below 24 for a sustainable bull rally. So watch the direction of the VIX and just remain cautious while the VIX is above 24 because that is still elevated volatility. On Bitcoin, we're currently down about 2%, trading still right around that support zone at $20,000. So there's still the possibility there's some accumulation at this support zone, but if we lose that support at 20,000 and break below the previous close right around 19,000, you're looking for the next leg lower in Bitcoin to be all the way down here at $12,000. There's nothing bullish about this chart, but there is clearly support at 20,000. But if you look at the trend, it's still a strong bear trend and price action is still below all the moving averages. The next bullish breakout will be back over 28,000 and then a close back over 35,000. So there is a lot of proving in the price action for the bulls. So just be very patient in Bitcoin. On Nvidia stock, we were down 5.26% and Nvidia had a clear rejection at the 20 simple moving average and lost that support level at 161. So right now you're looking for a retest of support at 156 and or hitting our price target at 150. If we lose 150, the next leg lower is all the way down there at 125. To the upside, you have a bullish breakout above 173, and then you'll likely see the gap fill right around 181, but you still have the 50 EMA right around 184, which will be critical resistance. And if we get the breakout above 184 and then 196, we will be looking for a bull trend to start being developed. But right now we still have the bear trend and we still have price action clearly getting rejected from resistance. So it's still very likely that we're trying to get down to 150, which is our price target. On Tesla stock, we were down 5% today with Tesla closing back down below that support level at $700. And we are back below all of the moving averages with the price action. And we do have a gap to fill down here at 663. So below 700, you're looking for the gap fill at 663. And below 663, you're looking for a retest of support at 620 or the next leg lower at 571 if we do break down below 620. So you can see Tesla is very close to regaining the bear trend if price action continues to head lower below $700. So use that as your risk level as a bear to short at or as a bull to go long at. Above $700, your next critical resistance will be right around 743. 
767 and 775. On Apple stock, we were down right around 3% today and Apple did close the gap to the downside right around 138 and it's back down to that support level at 137. If Apple loses support at 137, you're looking for the next gap close at 133 and below 133, you're looking for a retest of the low at 130. If we lose support at 130, you're looking for the next leg lower all the way down there at 120. So that will be a very bearish breakdown if Apple does break down below 130. Now to the upside, you can see a clear rejection from the resistance trend line. So we'll have resistance just above at 140, 143, and the 50 EMA just below 147. So you have a lot of critical resistance in what is clearly still a bear trend and still a bear market with downside gaps to fill. So it is possible we need to go a little bit lower to fill that gap. And then you'll be looking for the possibility of a higher low or the next lower low in Apple. On the financial sector, we were down 1% today with a very bearish rejection on the 20 simple moving average, which what looked to be like it was getting ready to close the gap above at 33.7. But right now you can clearly see a bearish candle with the bear trend. And it does look like we could come back down to retest support or find support at this 5 EMA to go close that gap above but that will still be very critical resistance before the next leg lower. Otherwise, we'll see the bullish breakout when the price action breaks above this critical resistance trend line, and then you can act accordingly. In the industrial sector, we were down 1.16% with a very clear rejection near that gap fill and 20 simple moving average, and the price action is back below all the moving averages yet again, and what is still a very strong downtrend. Don't get bullish until we can get all the way back over the 50 EMA and then break out above the resistance trend line, because we could still be going for another leg lower in the industrials. The healthcare sector was down 1.74% in what looks to be a false breakout look after breaking back over the 50 EMA and our resistance trendline, we're right back down within resistance and we're still sitting above the 5 EMA and the 20 simple moving average. So from here, you're looking for a bullish pullback to a higher low for the potential breakout again of another bullish pattern. Otherwise, this was a false breakout and you're still going to see the healthcare sector making the next leg lower. So there's some very critical support levels to the downside you will wanna be paying attention to because if we are going back into a bull trend, we will see that higher low and then the breakout to a new higher high. The energy sector was up 2.7% today, back over the 5 EMA and it did open a gap below. So on the energy sector, we do have a lot of gaps to the downside and the upside. So you will wanna watch this critical resistance to the upside right around 77.5 and the critical support to the downside down here at 70. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, this is clearly a downtrend until it's not, as I continue to tell you, always be expecting lower highs and lower lows in a bear market. Get comfortable seeing lower prices while we're in a downtrend and we are clearly still in a downtrend. Trying to go against the trend is going to cause you a lot of pain and a lot of angst, so get comfortable seeing the downtrend and then just trade accordingly, which means you should be shorting at resistance and only buying at very critical support levels. And the safest way to be a bull in this market is wait for those oversold conditions or that next leg lower as we come into critical price targets and set your risk accordingly. No matter if you're taking long trades or short trades, you need to have great risk management in a volatile market or you are not going to be doing this for very long because you are not going to stay profitable. Also, don't forget that I do have Bank Trade Alerts, which is an algorithm-driven trade alert service that only trades the ETF TQQ and sends you all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message. Even in the bear market of 2008, Bank beat the market and had a very positive return. If you're looking for more information or want to subscribe, you can click on the link in the description of this video. I also have the Stocks Channel Discord where I'm doing intraday updates and analysis and bringing new trade ideas to you weekly. If you're interested in joining the Stocks Channel Trading Discord community, you can find out how to join the Discord server by clicking on the link below. So thank you for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.